Last night, man, I was so drunk, I was calling Morocco, man, calling, trying to get to the Hotel Hilton at Tangiers in Casablanca, man. That's, I mean, that's, that's pathetic, man. Is that what you want to do with your life? Suck down peppermint schnapps and try to call Morocco at 2 in the morning? That's senseless, but that's what happens, man. If you want to know one of the uh, big problems with uh, modern filmmaking, it's that we no longer have people who are willing to risk it all. You know, it's too easy nowadays. It's just too dang easy. Once upon a time, you had uh, Sam Raimi, Bruce Campbell, etc. They, they went out to the backwoods of Tennessee and through hard work, tenacity, and some scrappiness. They made Evil Dead uh, all off in the far land of New Zealand. Peter Jackson's first film was Bad Taste. Took him four years to finish the film. Then in the 90s, you had the, the big independent film boom. You know, Quentin Tarantino got his start. Uh, uh, Kevin Smith famously maxed out all his credit cards to fund clerks. You had... Uh, uh, what's the story? Uh, Harvey Weinstein bought Troy Duffy's bar to make the Boondock Saints. They, they were so excited about uh, scraping up these uh, new up-and-coming filmmakers, these potential diamonds in the rough, and there was a real sense of uh, enthusiasm, of possibility, but you also had to go for it. You had to swing big. Nowadays, you could shoot an entire feature film on your iPhone, and, and some people have, and in theory, that's great. But there's also something to be said for the way uh, difficulty tempers an artist. Film was expensive back then. Film was expensive, equipment was expensive. The sort of bar for entry of older technologies, it, it kind of helps separate the wheat from the chaff. Nowadays, people are just getting thrown streaming deals left and right. You know, you could shoot some little rinky-dink horror movie and uh, Tubi, Tubi will buy it, Shutter will buy it. You used to have to buy the film, rent the equipment, shop for distribution. You had to cold call dentists to try and get funding. And I think you could make the argument that it's just, it's just too dang easy nowadays. We have more art, an increased uh, ease of filmmaking. It, it makes the ability for more art, but does it hasn't made for better art. All of which brings me to American movie. Every few years I go back and I revisit American movie and every time, every time it hits me right in the guts. This whole thing is turned into a theatrical mockery. You understand that, Mike? No. <laughs> well, you will. American movie is probably one of the best documentaries about filmmaking. Uh, you can point to Burden of Dreams. You can point to Heart of Darkness. You can point to, what was that one about Terry Gilliam trying to make Man of La Mancha, you can point to all these uh, other documentaries, but in my opinion, American Movie is just the most quotable, certainly. Penny, can you please put that, that soda, my soda, on the tarp so it's not frozen when we're done? Because I'd like to drink it, please. The film follows uh, Mark Borchard from the years 1994 to 1997, I believe. So it's, it's the heyday of the independent film boom. Again, Quentin Tarantino is just sort of... Uh, made his mark. Uh, uh, clerks, you know, you, uh, Mark Borchard was probably reading the, the story of how Kevin Smith got his film made. And so in large part, uh, American Movie is really sort of a snapshot of that uh, 90s independent film boom. And it's also sort of a snapshot of all the people who didn't make it. You know, it's one thing to hear about how a guy maxed out all his credit cards and succeeded, but you don't hear about all the guys who do the same thing and f kind of fall flat on their face. American Movie is the story of an, uh, an aspiring filmmaker who, while gearing up to film his dream project, uh, Northwestern, realizes he doesn't quite have the necessary funds and decides to go back and complete a short film called Coven. Uh, Coven, uh, that's the proper pronunciation. No, no, Coven sounds like oven, man, and that's just, it doesn't work. Mark Borchard's goal is to complete Coven and then use that to raise the necessary funds to make Northwestern. Along the way, we follow uh, Mark and his band of kooky misfits, his friend 
Mike Shank, his mother, his uncle, his uh, girlfriend, his kids. So it's about the uh, American independent film boom of the 90s, but it's also sort of, as the title implies, it's, it's more broadly kind of about the American dream. You know, uh, John Steinbeck has a great quote, uh, every, every American imagines themselves a temporarily dispossessed millionaire. And so Mark Borchard, he's in his 30s, maybe late late 20s at the time of filming and so he's not only uh, every aspiring filmmaker at that age but also just every person who's like you know my ship is is just about to come in my windfall is right around the corner it's a film about uh, dreams about ambition and the thing is mark borchard isn't completely untalented i don't think i don't think this is quite a tommy Wiseau situation at the time of uh, american movie he was he was maybe not the best writer mark borchard is maybe not the best writer but he at least had some sense of visual style and some sense of how to edit a film together you know i don't know if he's any more or less talented than say Kevin Smith, and I think I would have greatly preferred uh, 20 years of Mark Borchard films over 20 years of Kevin Smith films. I don't think an American movie would be as captivating as it is if you didn't have some sense that Mark could make it. So it's this collection of Milwaukee dreamers, and, and there's a real sort of a proto- friend simulator aspect to the film. Uh, nowadays, you know, the entire internet is a, is a non-stop ongoing documentary and there are so many venues for sort of peering into other people's lives and American movies sort of taps into that sensibility of like, you want to be there, you want to be there as uh, Mark Borchard is, is trying to finish Coven. The guy's enthusiasm is, is very infectious. It's a movie that, uh, while it is sort of a, a portrait of failure, it is kind of very inspiring. It does uh, light, a, light a fire under you where you, where you want to uh, tackle something with the same enthusiasm that uh, this motley crew of goofball Milwaukeeans do. It does sort of inspire that uh, uh, American frontier spirit. It's an interesting sort of postscript, but it's been 25 years and Mark Borchard has still not uh, made Northwestern. I came across a video that uh, came out after American Movie that said that he did uh, make the money that he needed from Coven enough to uh, finance Northwestern, but it's been 25 years and we still have not gotten uh, Northwestern, maybe someday. Uh, it seems uh, Borchard has done some other things. It's, it does seem that he has had some success. He had a documentary come out a few years ago that was making the rounds of the festival circuit, but uh, no Northwestern yet, but uh, maybe someday. But uh, yeah, I would say uh, American movie is definitely required viewing for anybody who has any sort of ambitions as a filmmaker or any ambitions as an artist, I think it's required viewing for anyone who's just sort of interested in film. I think it can offer a lot of insight uh, about what might have changed between uh, filmmaking of the past and filmmaking of the present. But then uh, beyond that, it's just a movie for, if you like people, it's just a, a real, occasionally uh, sentimental portrait of, I don't, I don't even know if I should call them eccentrics but just uh it is just sort of as the title implies just kind of a, a a snapshot of the american dream it's also sort of a a portrait of nostalgia like if you grew up in the 90s if you grew up in the late 80s i think this movie is going to strike a a special chord it's very much a, a time capsule of a time and a place and a, a vibe and just one of my favorite movies just the best american movie